So would you uh, would you say that there is somehow uh, art is a little more liberal than um, so maybe there is a spectrum of you know Sorry, let me correct you artists are not liberal I think other people are less progressive. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So, okay, let me reframe my question then. Do you, <laughs> do you think there is a spectrum of how progressive people are and the same spectrum uh, of people are both artists and audience? So you at some point have a very progressive artist presenting to maybe not so progressive audience and also maybe not so personally progressive artist presenting to a very liberal audience. Uh, is there, do you think we, uh, let's say in India or artists here in the US, we are aware of all the complexities uh, in terms of moral ground when we are presenting an art piece and do you think we should think about the audience and their sensibilities or what should we, want we be more true to ourselves when we are presenting it? How do you reconcile uh, a problem when it presents to you in terms of an audience not being receptive or you know not ready to understand the subtleties um, and you wanting to be true to you know a piece that you love or you want to convey something um, at a maybe a subtler level so how, how do you process what's your process in deciding on that um, see again I can only speak for myself and I will say, uh, sorry, what was the question again? <laughs> Lost my thought. Yeah. So uh, the, yeah. the debate between that? having a progressive audience to uh, a not so progressive uh, artist and comparing that to a not so progressive audience and a very progressive artist. So <laughs> the debate between those two and how would you present it? Um, see, here. Therein lies the difference between an artist and a performer. They're two different uh, identities, mm -hmm. subconsciously manifest identities. Um, I think that a performer worries about what people think. A performer worries about what will sell. What does the market want? How can I be, be uh, recognized? All these are hallmarks of a performer. An artist creates regardless of whether the work is accepted or not. An artist goes ahead, forges ahead, because that is his nature. Without that he will perish. And I would like to think that over time I have tried to cultivate the sensibility not of a performer but of an artist. So if my artistic conviction lies with a certain concept, a certain type of work, I'll go to any extent to do justice to it and to present it to the best of my ability. How it is received is not my concern. It really isn't. And I, and I have to say that I've been fortunate that I've had, I've received a lot of love from the audience. Uh, no matter how um, how shall we say radical for the right word? How radical the presentation or the content was? Um, I've seldom had anybody get be offended by what I did, and if if they were offended, probably they left halfway. I don't know, uh, but uh, so far my personal approach to it is that if I believe in it, if if it moves me as an artist, if the, if the concept moves me as an artist, then it is the right place for me to start the work. If it doesn't move me, I don't go there at all. It, it's pointless for me. 
I hope that answers your question. Yeah, I think your answer just reminded me of um, is it Kishori uh, Amulkar? Ah, uh, Kishori Amulkar. She starts every performance of hers. I have heard that uh, trying to Shruti the Sur Bahar, uh, trying to pitch her instrument, which takes a long time, and she doesn't talk to anyone. No organizers. No small talk. No chit chat. And if the performance is going to start at 6 p.m. and if his, her instrument has not pitched to her satisfaction and she's not in the zone, she doesn't start the performance. So uh, even you said like an artist doesn't care so much about the reception, but people, people, no, no. Love. I mean, people I stay behind to hear her even if it doesn't start at the time that the organizers need to start. At. I would like to, I'd like to clarify, it's yeah. not that the artist doesn't care. It's that the artist cares a whole lot about, about the art, art itself. Mm. Itself, you see, and it is very easy to misunderstand mm. an artist at that moment when she's tuning her surbahar for an hour and think, mm. "Oh, she doesn't care about us." But it is not about you. Right. It is not even about herself. <laughs> it is about the music. Right. So, as, so as long as the music is ready to be presented. We all wait, and including her. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it just reminded me of that. So uh, I think it's a long topic, and we can talk a lot. Uh, <laughs> Rao, you've been quiet. Do you want to add something? <laughs> um, from Raj, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah. No, from what Mesma was saying, actually. Um, it just reminds me when when you take Shetraya and think of Padams like Padams and Javlis like Samay uh, Midera or Samay Samay Midikadura. I mean, it is it is the artist's presentation, and then whatever the the audience can understand from it, because the vocabulary of Bharatanatyam is uh, catered to different age groups that people will not be able to understand if the age group of the children are in the audience, they wouldn't be able to interpret every single abhinaya that is not appropriate to their age. I think, I mean, it's like saying an obscene scene when it was, when you watched it on the television as a kid, you wouldn't understand any of it, but then when you are in the right age, you would actually make sense to what that is, right? So I think similarly, the Abhinaya itself caters the art, when I say Abhinaya in this case, caters to every age group and people appreciate it. I mean, when, when it's a kid, she's just looking at a guy waiting for a girl and then when the kid grows up, she realizes that she's actually not waiting for some guy, she's actually waiting for her husband, and then, and then she's able to, you know, the maturity in Abhinaya comes with age, and I mean, it's way more complex, as Mesma said, that people actually understand it at the right time. So it's, it's a very I'd complex like to, process. I'd like make, to make a quick distinction here. You know, artistic experience, both for the artist and for the Rasika, is not about how we think or what we think. Artistic experience is about how we feel. There is a fundamental difference between a cerebral analysis of art and a visceral feeling of receive of presenting and of receiving it. I try mm -hmm. to stay in the domain of the visceral. My interest is not cerebral. I'm not analyzing what what should be done and what can be done and how can it be done yes all this is there in the background but the primary act of creating is purely visceral and that's why I don't worry about whose reaction will be what because I, I expect them to put their cerebral analyses out uh, before they start experiencing what I have to share with them. Mm, yeah, I think I, I can't agree more, but I have a lot more to say, but unfortunately we are out of time, so maybe we'll pick it up in the no. next session. Um, thank you all for joining us, and we'll meet you in section uh, three of this episode.